Jag är här för Arona, det är nu två veckor i Osnabrück, för att exhibition Your Splendid. And your research about birds started in the central part of New York when you met Nick. <laughs> yeah, what, what about the what bird about watcher? <laughs> well, he was actually the first bird watcher I, I ever met. Um, and he was the one introducing me to this spectacular world of birders, how they call it, too. So uh, he was the one that invited me for my first walk to Birdwatch and I discovered the bird that originated the entire project which is a small eagle that has the same migrating path that I've been um, kind of having uh, the last years of my life too. So this bird um, comes from the southern part of Canada and it goes all the way crosses America, goes through the Gulf of Mexico, it goes through Central America and it enters South America through Colombia. And it, it arrives to a specific point that is called El Cañón de Conveima, that is very close to Onda, where um, I was offered a residency program with Jose Roca, that is the director of Flora Arts Natura in Bogotá. Uh, and this gave me the chance to also go back to Colombia. So it marked my returning, me returning to Colombia, but also returning with the eagle. And you made special experience with these birds. You uh, traveled like they traveled, but sometimes you could only hear them, but couldn't see them. That's right. Um, so the the um, theme of the exhibition or of your research is to, to trust even if you don't see something and this, this must, must be very special so um, it is a very it is it is it's a very uh, critical point to the exhibition because when you bird watch regularly you you would like to see certain birds um, but even when you really desire that, um, sometimes they don't appear. You might hear them, you might know they are around, but not necessarily you will be able to see it. And it was a big lesson for me, because as artists, as visual artists, we are always looking for images. So we forget the rest of our senses. So um, I became much more aware of sound, of temperature, of humidity, um, of the smells, and and all of these um, kind of feelings, they they do create a map that is completely different from the visual one, and they, it also describes like a trajectory um, in a very different way. So it showed me a different path from where also the at that moment the project um, gave like. It was. It, it gave it a shift. I think, not only uh, based on on what I was seeing or what I was drawing or what I was like trying to capture with the cameras or whatever. And um, it gave me an idea on how sound um, points your attention to something specific. But it also creates a very different trajectory. Uh, the speed of sound is very different of the speed of light and all of these elements started to, to kind of become very very important for me as well as um, the human experience of, of traveling you know with other people that were not necessarily related to the art scene so the conversations were completely different, the interests are so, so different as well. Um, but it taught me to trust again uh, on people, on myself, on what I was doing. Uh, I think I, also, I was also very lucky that I was working with Jose Roca um, because he was very patient. So he, I think that for the institution at the beginning in Colombia, um, it was difficult 
because it was a project that we didn't know exactly where it was going to go or how was the installation of it going to happen, the performances. Um, so by the moment and the time that I arrived to Colombia, that I was actually, after a year, it was the first, the second time I saw the eagle. And I didn't see the eagle, the eagle was looking at me. <laughs> so it, it is very magical that after years of kind of researching and listening to the songs and trying to get a lot of information from different sources, mm, I never saw it. Uh, but finally when I go back to my country, I get to see the bird. And that, this was a big miracle for you because you, uh, yeah, it, it was, was a special journey back to, to your home, homeland, to your hometown, and uh, it starts in New York and it ends at this place where, where you're not, uh, where you haven't been since, since years. Uh, years, since ten yeah. years. Okay. Um, yes, I think also part of the entire experience of, of seeing the bird, which was something that I, I heard from somebody else throughout my journey was that I was not ready to see the bird. Uh, so I think that when you lose this specific focus on I have to capture it on picture because I have to show people that I actually saw it. Mm, because we are so used to take pictures of everything we're doing, to document in, in a way it becomes almost like the proof that you were there that you were seeing whatever you were seeing and I was not able to get this picture until I finally arrived to Colombia and at that same moment um, the guide that was taking me through the river where we were trying to see the bird when this happened when the event of the bird watching at us happened um, he said to me this is happening because you are splendid so I didn't know exactly why he was using that word, but in, in, in many ways um, it reminded me of the words that my grandmother used to use regularly. So I asked him, like, what do you mean with I am splendid? And he said to me, a splendid is a person that brings light to things. And then he explained Further, what it means to be a person that brings light is somehow a person that has the ability to make things happen. So it created a link uh, between light and action, and for me that was very important because I'm a performance artist and I'm, uh, I love actions. Mm. Sometimes language is an idea, but you never see the act in reality. So I, I was able to to think about the word and at the same time uh, think about something happening in the space but also as an activity, as something that you create. So this part of the, of, of the journey also gave me a whole idea on how I should create the, the entire installation, how like to use shadows in order to address light. Mm, to embrace that side too, as part of, of seeing something. If you don't have that side, the dark side, you will never see the light. So they, they, they do come together and in a form that allows me also to talk about matter in a, in a different way, and the body. So a lot of the shadows are showing you something that is actually not there, but it's coming from something that is there. So it allows the viewer also to navigate the project in, 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 in very different patterns and sequences. So in a lot of ways, I think the spectator throughout the project becomes much more of an active person. It's not only watching or experiencing something, but actually creating the exhibition. Building nests is one of your big issues. Um, we, we see here uh, very nice big eggs and nests and drawings about birds. Um, uh, would, would you say that 
building a nest is something like mapping, mapping your journey, map, mapping your life, or may, maybe map, mapping something like like the future of society. I, uh, yes, um, there is a sense of, 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 of creating a, a trajectory, no? like a drawing of your emotion through a space. Uh, that is exactly what birds do when they are creating their nests, when they are building it. They go somewhere, they pick a stick, they bring it back to the same side and then they repeat the same action thousands of times. So the nest, in a way, becomes the map of all of these trajectories, but it's not flat. It has a volume. <laughs> of course, so, of course, it's, it's so a nest, it, is, yeah. it is interesting because uh, we do have uh, that same experience throughout the exhibition. You do see the weaving is not exactly as a nest. It has the the, the structural base of, of a nest, mm, but then you have the greed in one of the hallways that is a grid of a city that I, I walk through the, through my, my proposal in, in for the artist in residency program in London that I was walking for eight hours. It was my first time in London, so I didn't know the city. So what I did throughout my, my project in London was to walk eight hours a day, every day, and I started to trace the trajectories in the map. And at the end, we had these uh, kind of drawings or sculptures in the space hanging that will describe all of these trajectories. And we created here um, one grid that has London and Bogota uh, together. So if you see them, they will look m very much alike. They are nests, they are maps, they are cities they are countries and they just come together because the body is bringing together all of this experience mm. and then we saw it in a very we can see it in a different way in the drawings I'm describing you specific moments or images that were important for me or relevant some of them are tiny because I was drawing while I was walking so I could only fit like very small papers and they all fit in an envelope and they are like 200 drawings so I think all of these are trajectories and they are addressed in, 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 in very different ways but they also give you a sense of a map of how I am uh, trying to put together experiences put together places that are not completely like related at all culturally in terms also of language mm of how we understand some things and people from another place would understand maybe completely a complete different thing. Uh, so the project plays a lot with that, with the fact that we surprise each other. Mm, it, it, it affirms the quality of difference instead of creating like a distance because you're different from me. I actually think that is wonderful when, when you can um, share experiences with somebody that you absolutely don't know. Mm, it's an exchange of information always. So I think the project uh, creates uh, that feeling of, of being amazed with something. You know, like when I saw the bird for the second time, it was kind of supernatural <laughs> experience, and um, I want that to happen to people throughout the, the, the entire exhibition. We are here in a former church, you know, and we have this very special light. It's not a special, uh, not a uh, natural light. Sometimes it's a very colored light. What, what does it mean for you? you you're a specialist for lights <laughs> in a special kind. I think I'm, 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 I'm very lucky that we have two complete different spaces coming together. So the church already has like some sort of information contained, even though it's not used as a church anymore. Um, but it indicates that it's a place for you to wander in a very different way than the rest of the space. Um, it's a place for the spirit. It's a place for the light. 
it doesn't matter which light I'm talking about, it can be the physical light coming through the glasses and bringing all of this color into the structure. Um, which I think is very interesting also because of the, the season uh, I arrived, which is winter and it's darker, it's a, there's not a lot of light, of sun, you know, like I can have in Colombia. Um, but it brings it inside. So in a lot of ways, it reminds me of a different territory for me. My experience of, of, of seeing these projections of, of the glasses from like blue and red and, and kind of orange and the way they move through the space also addresses a lot of, of the nature of, of the project as well. That is something that is changing, that is moving, that is not staying in one place. Um, and that's why we have the swings inside the church as well. Uh, so the audience is called to move from one place to another, to not have the same position regarding one object, to, to really observe, as bird watchers do. They are very meticulous on, on how they experience every sight. They notice the air, they notice the smell, they notice the shadows, the humidity, if it's cold, if it's too warm. There are so many things in a space that you can actually engage with that I think the space of the church here is a big call for you to enjoy uh, a, a bigger space than the spaces you are used to. Also, the fact that we have high, super high ceilings, it elevates everything to a complete different dimension. It's very different when you come to the museum and you have lower ceilings, so your, your horizontal plane is completely uh, drawn in one line and it's closer to you and everything is more personal. As soon as you enter the church, you look up, which is something we, we are forgetting. We always look down. Also because we are all the time in our iPads and iPhones and all of these things, I think it's a great reminder of, of looking up. When you look up, the vision of the world is completely changed. So I think the church in this way brings light into so many different subjects and, and, and themes and concepts that we have about people, about places, about spaces, about elements. And it's very different if I would have the swing inside the museum in a different place. It could have been a lot easier, maybe, <laughs> to hang them. But to have them in the church addresses so many things that happen with your spirit, with another part of your body too, which is not um, like different from it. We tend to, to separate things, like my head and my body, and the spirit and energetic and all of these, I think, um, this space brings all of them together. We talk about, at the moment, um, changing rooms and um, migration. What, what do you think um, can we learn from the birds about these topics? I think I'm also very lucky because the project is arriving in a moment that Europe is going through a very critical time with, with migrants. Um, and for birds, migrating is vital. And for humans too. We've been migrating forever. And it's part of the evolution. It's part of what we are, uh, you and I. We are this, the, the addition of many journeys in like previous times. So I think that this project affirms the quality of migrating and as an action that brings you to different places um, it brings you closer to other people but it also allows you to learn from that experience which I think is what I learned through my journey with the Eagles and it was to actually absorb everything that was completely foreign to me and and, and, and produce knowledge out of it. And knowledge is another term related to light. 
and that's why sometimes you say this is an enlightened person because of knowledge because you, you've been able to evolve, you've been able to accommodate, you've been able to adapt, which is something that I think is very interesting to me, as the first time we, we installed the project was in a smaller place, and the challenge for me to arrive here to a much bigger space, it makes me adapt mm, with no option. <laughs> to the space, which is something we, we, we all do. And then I've been migrating forever. I was born in Colombia, but within Colombia I was all the time traveling. Then I left Colombia and I went to the US and I managed to adapt um, to the country, to the language, to the, to the culture. I, I love the US. Um, and I've been coming to Germany already for like three years. So, so I've been able also to understand and to learn a lot, even though I don't know the language. So I think also that ability comes across through the project and it addresses migration not as a difficult topic, um, but actually as something we are all doing. So it levels out a little bit the conversation. So my, my last question is, uh, when we uh, open the exhibition on Sunday, um, you won't go, you stay here in, in Osnabrück till the 9th of March and there will be a weekly uh, performance right. on, on Sunday. Can, can you um, talk a little bit about this? What, what, why, why do you make this weekly performance? I think performance in general connects it, it creates a connectivity with the audience um, and specifically this one on Sunday it, it opens up the dialogue of the, of the project. We have a table where we have placed different elements and objects that I have gathered throughout my journey, some books that are important and relevant for me. Mm. But also each object is allowing you to understand what's going to happen next. So it's called flight plan. So it's another map of the future. It's allowing you to see further. If you notice the elements and hopefully if you come back to the other performances, you will see a lot of the elements that are right now on the table and are not active and being used as part of the other pieces. So it becomes like an oracle. Uh, and then, of course, each of us has a very different experience with these objects. So um, it will allow people to start to, to, to rewrite the project, which is something that I'm, I'm very much looking forward. So I'm also going to be every Tuesday sitting here where we are, <laughs> um, trying to have a conversation of, of what people are experiencing, what they see, what they, what they don't maybe. Mm, it's also like an experiment, I believe, um, where we're trying to, to create some sort of, of links between people, even with the difficulty of language, you know. So I think it's, 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 it's going to be really incredible to see how the project moves and how people move through out the project. We'll, we'll see at the end what the conversation is and what the ending result is. Okay, thank you very much for <laughs> this you. conversation and for this wonderful exhibition. Thank you for your beautiful questions and time.